canvas. What's up? What's going on? Hello, hello, hello. How you guys doing out there? Happy Sunday. Happy Easter. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another great epic episode of Just My Opinion Reviews. Thank you. This is number 122. Really do appreciate you guys tuning in and joining me this uh, happy Easter Sunday. We got one more day left in the month of march and then we're starting out april 1st tomorrow april fools any april fools jokes anything going on like that but guys uh but like like always before we get started let me know how i'm looking let me know how i'm sounding let me know if i am chris please 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 let me know if i am clear um i would really really appreciate it sorry for the uh delay today and getting the um and getting the show started um, I, I, uh, was having some technical difficulties and I really did last time, la last show as well this past Thursday, but I was able to work it out. Um, I am trying to stream as you guys bear with me. I am, oh man, it's a, uh, a 20, it's going to be a 22 second delay. Okay. I was trying to stream in a higher quality. Um, uh, but when you do that, you, the way YouTube is set up is there is a delay uh, from when you guys can see me also from when you guys can see me um, in the chat, but I'm trying to work it out still I'm trying to work it out uh, So bear with me Soto Soto. Thank you so much for letting me know that I'm crisp. I am clear I'm trying to bring up the comments right now uh, But I'm having I'm still having some issues last time. I uh, Tried to bring up the comments. It wasn't working. You know, um, it was when I when I brought up the comments, it was uh, what did it do? It was stuck on the it was stuck on the screen, and and wouldn't go anywhere, and that was just horrible. And so uh, I think I'm trying to bring them up now, but I'm still man, 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 it's not working. It's not working. So we may not be able to bring up any comments uh, on the show today as well, and that is so unfortunate. I thought I had this fixed, but hey, we're going we're going uh, we're gonna. We're going to keep on going. We're going to rock out. So, um, oh, am I too loud? Okay. Let me bring that down a little bit. But uh, let me know how you guys are doing out there. If you celebrate, let me know how you are uh, celebrating Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Um, I really appreciate it. Hopefully, everything that you got done today is finished. Hopefully, you got all your clothes washed. Hopefully, you got all your food cooked. And it is put away in its little containers and its little Tupperware. Hopefully, you have all of your clothes ironed out for the entire week um, and laid out across your bed like it is the first day and first grade, first day of school. Hopefully, 
hopefully uh, wherever you are, whether you're in the bed, you're on the couch, you're in the jacuzzi, you're in your recliner, you're on the roof, you in the tub, wherever you are, hopefully you are relaxed and ready to get this moving news roundup show going on. we got 10 topics that we're going to be discussing today. Everything will be in the description box of this video um, that we will be discussing today. And so if you want to look ahead, go ahead and check that out in the uh, description box below. And let me try to do this one more time. Come on now. Come on, comments. The live chat is no longer this. Okay. You, YouTube cannot connect. Why not? Why are you? It's, I'm, I'm turning on the comments. The set is on right now. And then it's going to see. It's just going to switch off. But we have um, Antonio Armstrong in the building. What's going on? Rabia Yamazawa. What's going on? Happy Easter. And thank you so much. <laughs> For the uh, $2 super chat or super sticker, I really do appreciate it. What's going on, Buck Thoughts? What's going on, Antonio Armstrong? Uh, Derek Gaines, what's going on? Kyla Kale is in the building. Bump, uh, T Bump TY5X is in the building. Thank you. And let's get those thumbs up. How many people watching right now? We got, let me see, uh, 41 people watching right now. That's a wonderful, beautiful thing. Uh, Chill Spot, a.k.a. Thor's as Guardian Queen. Happy Easter, everyone watching while painting eggs. Oh, that's wonderful. That's that's lovely. I love to see it. Also, uh, Dava, Dava Rhea Fosha is in the building. What's going on? Thank you for being here. And also, Soto Soto. So, uh, guys, thank you so much for uh, coming through. I really, really, really do appreciate it. And I'm going to try to do these comments one more time because I got with my developer and I was like, hey, I was having these problems and he fixed it and I thought everything was good to go. So, man, why are you not working? Why are you cutting on and cutting off? Ugh, that's so unfortunate. That is so, damn it, damn it, damn it. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy right there. Hold on. Y'all bear with me. I, I appreciate y'all's patience. And that's another reason why I am uh, I was like, I'm not going to be inviting any guests for a while because I want to make sure that I have this together. I'm doing everything. Well, I don't know what's going on. What am I, what am I not doing? What am I not doing? Hold on. Maybe. Okay. Is that see that's a that's an old comment though. So that's a hold on, let me y'all give me one second, man. I appreciate y'all's patience. Cause I the live chat is no longer live. Source YouTube live chat dot connect. What does that mean? Hold on. Refresh view log. Y'all bear with me. Edit title. Okay. It says it's connected. Okay. We're going to view this. We're going to view the queue. Clear the queue. Yes. All right. So we're going to save that. Oh, is that is that the reason why? Cause I got multiple popped up. Okay. Okay, maybe clear. Okay, hold on. Maybe it's gonna work now. Hold on. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm crossing my fingers. Okay. All right, we're gonna click this. Hold on, y'all. I appreciate y'all's patience. Give me one second. All right. Okay, everything looks good there. All right, on. Okay, is it gonna work? Damn it, it is not gonna work. Okay, well, ah, that's frustrating. That's that's frustrating. Oh, okay, uh, live. Okay, okay, okay. Got that. I saw something that. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. I think we got some comments. I think it's working. Bam. All right. Yeah. 
<laughs> we don't give up over here, baby. <laughs> we don't give up over here. What I, I think I know what I did. Uh, so I appreciate it, man. Y'all, thank you for your patience. Hold on, let me let me get this right. Okay, what's uh nice and, and, and the great the, the lovely name? Nice to nasty for you. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on man so uh yeah yeah baby we we gonna yeah we're gonna do it like this right here um thank you uh rabia happy happy uh easter everybody all right and um super chat thank you so much our super sticker uh buck thoughts is in the building thank you um antonio armstrong what's good what's good Kyla Kale, what's up? I'm happy we got some comments now. Thank you. And that's myself right there. Let's get those thumbs up. What's going on, uh, Chill Spot? Okay. All right. Peace be free. Yes. All right. All right. I'm a happy camper. Thank you. Thank you. And now I got to work on the color of the emojis. And also when, so usually with StreamYard, when a super chat comes up, it's all colorful and stuff like that. So I gotta make sure that that's colorful too. But hey, we we making progress, baby. And and guess what? I, I can take the comments down because that's <laughs> I'm, I was having an issue with that. And also I take the ticker down with the push of a button. Yeah, I've got this uh, stream deck right here. So yes, <laughs> I'm happy. I'm I'm happy. I'm I'm happy. So um, what's uh? Let's see here. Who else we got in the building? Uh, what's going on? Uh, Marcus Terry, how you doing? Thank you so much for being here. All right, guys. All right, all right. Let's uh, let's do the dang thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, Soto Soto. Where where you at Soto? Where you at Soto Soto? Where you at? Let me know. You ready? Get, give me a one in the chat if y'all are ready to uh, get this party started. Um, I would really, really appreciate it. All right, all right, uh, man. We got. Uh, I forgot to click this button because it was gonna be uh, just a 13 second delay, but now it's gonna be like 20 something. So, all right, y'all. Let's go ahead and get this party started. Moving News Roundup Show number 122. All right. Welcome back. Thank you guys for being here again. I do appreciate it. I do appreciate it. Right now, I'm only live on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to try next week to be live on Instagram, Twitter, X, Twitch, and also Facebook. But I can only do one thing at a time, okay? Again, if you're curious on what we will be discussing today, everything will be in the description box of this video. Uh, we got 10 topics. What we're going to be discussing today, unfortunately, we do have some lovely people that passed away. They are no longer with us. Uh, also have some grand news for Paramount, the new uh, G.I. Joe franchise. Uh, also, we got some news for Sonic the Hedgehog 3, uh, a Scream 7 update, and some casting that's possibly coming back. Also, Alien Romulus. Did you check out the trailer? Last week it was fire. I'm really looking forward to that. Scarlett Johansson, what movie is she going to be coming out with pretty soon? We're going to check that out too. Pirates of the Caribbean. Does anybody give a damn? I don't know. We're going to talk about it. I'll let y'all know my thoughts when we get to it. Star Trek 4 and also Timothy Chalamet did sign a huge deal with Warner Brothers. And so we are going to get into all of that right there. Um, but unfortunately like i said we did lose a uh, few people uh recently um and it's very sad this is going to be uh topic number one uh coming from variety and give me two seconds let me try to make this production the best that i possibly can for you guys okay um, like I said, this is coming from Variety, and the topic says, um, Chance Perdomo, Gen V, and Chilling Adventures of Sabrina star dies at uh, 27 years old. This is what the gentleman looks like right here. And um, I am not that familiar with him. Um, 
I've heard of Gen V. I've heard nothing but good things about it, but I, I haven't watched the show um, or the boys. But Chance Perdomo, who starred in the television series Gen V and Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, has died as a result of a motorcycle accident. He was only 27 years old. Uh, Perdomo's publicist confirmed the British American's actor death Saturday in a statement to Variety. It is with heavy hearts that we share the news of Chance Perdomo's ultimate untimely passing as a result of a motorcycle accident. Authorities have advised that no other individuals were involved. His passion for the arts and his uh, insatiable appetite for life was felt by all who knew him and his warmth will carry on in those who he loved dearest. We ask to please respect the family's wish for privacy as they mourn the loss of their beloved son and brother. Um, Variety is awaiting a response from Perdomo's publicist regarding the location of his death. Representatives for the Los Angeles Police Department were unable to confirm if Perdomo's death occurred in Los Angeles when reached by Variety. The LA coroner's office did not immediately respond to requests for comment. And so, um, man, well, that, that's just is it 27 years old. Uh, Perdomo was known for his roles as Ambrose Spellman in Netflix Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. You know, I was watching um, One Take Big Dog's um, TikTok, and shout out to him. Uh, he was giving, um, you know, sharing his condolences online. And he did, he did say that he watched Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. So if you guys did uh, watch that show, um, you know, let me know in the comment section if you was a big fan of his work. Wow, so sad. Yeah, I know, Soto Soto. I know. It's, it's, it's 27 years old. Uh, we can't quite wrap our heads around this for those who had knew him and worked with him. Chance was always charming and smiling, an enthusiastic force of nature, an incredibly talented performer, and more than anything else, just a very kind, kind, lovely person. The Gen V producers say in a joint statement, even writing about him in the past tense, doesn't make sense. We are so sorry for Chance's family. And we are very, we are grieving the loss of our friend and colleague. Hug your loved ones tonight. Yeah, man, you never know uh, when your time is going to be up. So make sure you love, uh, love your people, um, you know, when they're here. Uh, there's people in my family that I unfortunately don't have the uh, best relationship with. And so that I haven't hung out with in a couple of years, you know. Uh, but we got a date that's coming Wednesday, and I'm really happy about that. You know, because uh, I love this person and my family dearly. And so I would just, I reached out to them. Well, they actually reached out to, well, no, I reached out to them last week and then they reached back out and then they reached out again. And I was like, hey, man, you want to, you want to link up on, on Wednesday? And uh, they was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. And I was, I'm really happy and, you know, really taking that to heart, you know. And so uh, love your, love your people while they're here because you never know. And this is just sad that this young brother, um, is no longer with us at the at the young age of 27 years old, and so uh, I'm gonna just bring his filmography up um, just to see any other roles that he's been in. Let's see here. He, what did he have upcoming? Bad Man. So he was in Gen's, Gen V. After everything, after ever after, I haven't seen any of these, uh, but it was all over the place. Like a lot of people knew who this young gentleman was. So this is just unfortunate right here um so very very sad very very sad um and so again link is in the description box below for you to read at your own leisure and uh let's just give this young brother a few moments of silence
Oh, sorry about that. I'm muted. Um, but yeah, say, let's say something nice about Papa Shorty. Thank you. So y'all say some nice things about me. Uh, I hang out with y'all more than the bloody family. So thank you for, you know, hanging out with us and kicking it with us. You know, we really do appreciate it. And so um, hopefully y'all can hear me now because I don't, I don't think I'm muted anymore. Uh, but again, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Papa Shorty. I do appreciate it. All right. All right. Let's um, let's move on to the next topic. And usually with my tickers, all I have to had to do was just click on the button, but it's a little bit more work with the platform that I'm doing now. But uh, we have a legend, man, um, that passed away. Another legend that passed away, unfortunately. Um, this is coming from uh, the Hollywood Reporter. Um, this says, uh, Louis Gossett Jr., star of an officer and a gentleman and roots dies at uh, 87 years old man uh he was he was up there too um the brooklyn native also appeared in the original broadway production of uh a raisin in the sun and wrote a song with folk legend richie uh havens uh lewis gossett jr uh, let me try to make that bigger lucy gossett jr the tough guy with the sensitive side who won an oscar for his portrayal of a steely sergeant and an officer and a gentleman and an Emmy for his performance as a compassionate slave in the landmark miniseries Roots died Friday. He was 87 years old. In a statement obtained by the Hollywood Reporter, his family said, it is with our heart felt or regret to confirm our beloved father passed away this morning. We would like to thank everyone for their condolences at this time. Please respect the family's privacy during this difficult time. Of course, of course. Uh, first cousin Neil, L. Gossett told the Associated Press that Gossett died in Santa Monica. No cause of death was given, but the actor announced in 2010 that he had prostate cancer. Wow, I did not know that. So he's been battling that for, for 14 years. Um, with his sleek, bald hate and athletic physique, Gossett was intimidating in a wild array of no-nonsense roles, most notably in Taylor uh, Hackford's Officer and a Gentleman in 1982. Where Gunnery Sergeant and Mill Foley, he rides Richard Gere's character mercilessly, but for his own good, at an officer candidate school and gets into a um, memorable martial arts fight. I gotta go back and check it out. He was a, he was the second black man to win an acting Oscar, following Sidney Poitier in 1964. Yeah, man, I was uh, I was not aware of that. Were you guys? That's that's pretty dope. Uh, for the role, the six foot four Gossett trained for 30 days at the Marine Corp Recruitment Division, an adjunct of Camp Pendleton north of uh, San Diego. I knew I had to put myself through at least one degree of this all encompassing transformation, Gossett wrote in his 2010 biography, An Actor and a Gentleman. Uh, Douglas Day Stewart's original script called for Gears Zach Mayo to beat up Foley. The Marines changed it, Gossett recalled in a 2010 interview. They said that an enlisted man would never beat up a drill sergeant. We'll tear the place up unless you change it. They said, if you don't do this, well, Mr. Gossett, we're going to have to kill you. My goodness gracious. Um, in a statement Friday, Hackford noted that the part was written to be a white man. When I visited the Navy officer's flight training career in Pensacola, Florida, I discovered that many of the drill instructors were there were men of color, the director said. I found it interesting that black and brown enlisted men had to make or break control over whether white college graduates would become officers and fighter pilots. At that moment, I changed the casting uh, profile for Sergeant Foley and started meeting actors of color. So yeah, if you guys wanna uh, read the whole article again, um, it is in the description box below for you to read at your own leisure. And uh, just looking at this man's filmography, uh, man, 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 this is, this is really unfortunate. Um, he was in Jaws 3D. What he had 12 things coming up? My goodness. So he's still going to be around for a while. But look at that. How many credits does he have? Over 200. Man, over 200 credits. Yeah, you're right about that. Um, Tasmanian, uh, Tasman 67, a true legend, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, my goodness. My goodness. Um, 
Yeah, he was just in the color purple. I, I did see that. Outlaw Johnny Black was pretty good. I have a review on my channel for both of those if y'all want to check it out. I do remember him in Watchmen. Um, Hawaii Five-0. Let's see here. Y'all put in the chat, you know, what, you know, um, y'all remember seeing him coming from, seeing him playing, excuse me. Let's see here. Boardwalk Empire. Heard of that. Heard of Psych. Why did I get married too? Okay, I remember that. Uh, so many, uh, yeah, like I said, over two hundred credits. You know, he was the voice of Lucius Fox in the Batman. I was not aware of that. Also, Daddy's little girl, a Tyler Perry production. Stargate SG One. I remember when I was in elementary junior high. One of my friend childhood friends that their father was really, uh, really into that right there. So, yeah, man, this is um, this sucks. You know, we can't be here forever, you know, but, you know, he made it to 87. So uh, it would be wonderful if I could make it to 87 or at least everybody, you know. But, yeah, man, uh, this is uh, where you lost the legend. I don't know why my eyes are getting watery right now. I'm trying to keep it together. But, yeah, Officer and the Gentleman, 1982, two years before I was on this green earth, um, and I haven't seen this movie all the way through. So uh, that's something that I need to, I definitely need to go check out. Uh, let's see here. Um, this was so shocking, so sad. I was a fan. He was the perfect Ambrose, Ambrosa spelling from the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and will be missed. Okay. And uh, okay, they're cutting off comments. Okay, I got to see what's going on with that too. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, a lot of um, a lot of upcoming movies. A lot of upcoming movies. Uh, let's see here. R.P. He was so good, and that so so officer and gentleman. Best thing about the movie. Right on, right on. Look at this brother. Looks very very happy. Um. Yep, I got you. I got you. And a shout out to you, Nathan Moore. Great actor. I remember him from. Uh, watching Roots, right on, right on, right on. Yeah, man, uh, rest in peace, my guy. This is very, very unfortunate. Uh, but again, let's go ahead and give this brother, um, you know, some a uh, few moments of silence. Rest in peace, Louis Gossett Jr. All right, guys, and again, there's a link in the description if you want to read the whole thing. And whether you're watching this via live on the replay, uh, please let me know, um, you know, if you was a big fan of his work uh, before he uh, he passed away, unfortunately. All right. All right. All right. Let's uh, let's see what what the, the box office is looking at real quick. I haven't done this in a while. Uh, but Godzilla v. Kong is in theaters now. Uh, had a 55% from the critics. I need to put my review up there. I, I enjoyed the film 93%. Um, there is a review for it on my channel. If you guys want to go check that out, I did list, you know, put this up pretty late. Uh, but $194 million worldwide so far, an $80 million opening. Um, not bad. Now let's see what what a Godzilla. Well, first let me see what the uh, let me see, let me actually let me do this. Wait, 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 where is it? Okay, let me do this. Godzilla X Kong, the new Empire box office. Bam, bam, and press the button. Okay. Uh, what was the budget for this? Let's see here real quick. Production budget. Carries a 135 production budget. So outside, okay, cool. 135. So what, let's have some math here. 135 times three. So four hundred million dollars is is very attainable, in my opinion, for this for the studios to feel like they didn't waste that darn time. 
So, you know, it just needs a little more than 200 million to go. So that's cool right there. What did Godzilla vs. Kong make at the box office? Vs. Kong, what did that make in 2021? 470, okay, cool. So that's 470. What did Kong Skull Island make? Kong Skull, Kong Skull Island, 2017. 568, okay. Uh, Godzilla, 2014 one. 524, okay. So I can understand why they keep making uh, sequels. King of the Monsters. What did this one make? 387. Yeah, and this was the weaker one, in my opinion. You know, I have a ranking video coming up uh, pretty soon. Uh, I ranked them in my review, but if you guys want to check that out, uh, you can. It's, it's coming up, but yeah, this was the weaker. So I did Kong Skull Island. Yeah, I got them all. Okay, so have y'all seen? It was, I, I mean, it was silly. It was, it was dumb fun, but, you know, I had a good time with it. Uh, I had a good time with it. So did y'all see the movie? Uh, hit a one in the chat uh, if you did or did not. Uh, I am so frustrated that uh, there's such a delay in the uh, in the chat, but because um, us usually it's only a seven second delay, but now it's it's over um, twenty seconds. So that's that's kind of stinks. But did y'all did y'all see Godzilla? Um, Okay, let's see what you have to say here. Um, I'm a one-off. I love just about every movie in the MonsterVerse, but this one was really good. I only watched it. You know what? Let me try to fix this. Hold on. I'm going to take the limited comments off. There we go. So Nathan Moore saw it. Okay. And Soto Soto, you said you're seeing it tonight. Okay. I uh, I just made a change to the comment thingy. So I think I didn't put a limit on it. So I, th I had it at 140 characters. So that's why your comment was cut off. But I just turned it off. And hopefully it's saved. But we're, we're going to see. All right. Uh, I'm going to check it out tomorrow. Okay. That's what's up. Come back if you if you've seen the film, go to my review, please, and um, y'all let me know what y'all think. You know after y'all see it. All right, all right, okay, all right. Let's uh move on, move on to the the next topic of the day, and what we got here coming up. Let me fix this. All right, let me change the background. Okay, let me do, oh, do that. Y'all gonna have to bear with me a little bit. Okay, this is topic number three. Topic number three, and this is gonna be coming from Yahoo News or Yahoo uh, Entertainment. Okay, and we got some G.I. Joe updates. Who is a fan of G.I. Joe? Concept is badass, but the, the movies that they came out in the past few years were not the best in my opinion. But of course, you guys can let me know what you think. Again, this is coming from Yahoo Entertainment. For, or No, yeah, well, Superhero Hype, Yahoo Entertainment, Superhero Hype. Uh, it says Snake Eyes actor Henry Golding says Paramount has a grand a grand grand plans for the G.I. Joe franchise. <laughs> Did y'all see the Snake Eyes movie? My goodness gracious. It was so disappointing. The trailers look freaking badass. Um, all these fights and stuff, but you couldn't even you couldn't see anything. It, it was it was ridiculous. It was it was ridiculous. But let, let's see what these grand plans are. Snake Eyes actor Henry Golden says that Paramount has some grand grand plans for the GI Joe franchise. Mind you, I even I forgot to say this. If you saw Transformers Beast Wars, the last Transformers movies, 
there was a post credit scene, spoilers ahead, that they're going to be merging the worlds, the crossover between G.I. Joe and Transformers. That's pretty cool. And I was excited, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, let, let what you say, Soto Soto. Uh, the storyline could be better, but um, but still giving them my money, unfortunately. Right, right. Speaking with comicbook.com. Uh, Goldwyn provided a brief update regarding what the future of G.I. Joe franchise might look like. I mean, Leo Le Lorenzo Di Bonaventura is a busy man and a phenomenal producer. And it's in safe hands, Golden said. Whatever happens, I think it's going to be a combination of what come, what has come and what ha is to come. I think Paramount has some grand, grand plans. I don't know, man. Uh, you know, it's like I said, what's next in the G.I. Joe franchise? The ending of 2003's Transformers Rise of the Beast suggested that a crossover Transformers G.I. Joe project may be coming sometime in the near future. So that's cool. Uh, Transformers Rise of the Beast director Stephen Cable Jr. told The Hollywood Reporter in 2023, I was like, maybe we don't have to go through the classic characters like Snake Eyes and Duke and all these other characters. Maybe there's a way we can use other characters that haven't been utilized as much. There are different series and editions and different factions of G.I. Joe as well. There's G.I. Joe Renegades and different branches of it, too. So I started to play with that and I pitched versions of it to the studio and producers. I pitched the direction I wanted to go in and ways to branch out the movie universe in general. Transformers movies have a scope and size, blah, blah, blah. We all know that. Is anybody looking forward to this? Now, I'm not going to lie. I did enjoy Transformers Beast Wars. It was pretty good. It was one of the better Transformers movies out of the whole franchise. Um, but, and I did get excited when they were crossing over, said they was going to cross over G.I. Joe and, um, and Transformers. Um, should they reboot G.I. Joe? Yes. I, you know, Henry Golden looked like he's going to be coming back, but I was just so disappointed with that move. I mean, how do you, how do you mess that up? They, man, that shred looked badass, but you couldn't see the fights. You couldn't see the choreography. It was ridiculous. So that really just bums me out right there. If I have to be completely honest with you, uh, but you guys let me know what y'all think about this. Um, let's see here. I enjoy Transformers, but G.I. Joe has me indifferent. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. So, yeah, you guys let me know what y'all think about this, um, if you're excited about it. Did anybody see Did anybody see um, Transformers Beast Wars or the Snake Eyes? I enjoy it. Wait, wait, what happened to that comment? I thought I posted it. Yeah, G.I. Joe definitely needs to reboot for sure. Yeah. I got you. I got you. If it's not comedic action, I might watch G.I. Joe, but not for my... Okay. Let me move that down. It's going to be easy for me to navigate. So, yeah, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this in this comment section below. But, you know, I am... I'm, 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 I'm excited, but I'm not excited. You know, so... Link is in the description. Uh, you guys let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. Because I'm curious to know. Very, very curious to know. All right. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on to the next topic. Now, this does get me a bit excited if um, I had to be completely honest with you. Uh, because, yeah, this was um, this was pretty good. Uh, I did enjoy the first two movies thoroughly well, quite well. Um, I think that they both did great at the box office i think that both was received um well by critics and the audience both and so if this pops off into fruition well no it already has that's what the report is you know I i'm happy about this what am i talking about this is topic number four coming from where is this coming from uh, Nintendo Life. Nintendo Life. Let's give them a shout out. I've never heard of them before. Talk number four. Uh, that's a wrap. The Sonic the Hedgehog 3 movie is done filming. All right. All right. That's that's a good thing. Because like I said, I, I enjoyed the first uh, couple of movies. 
leading the chain leading the charge wait movies featuring leading the charge for the new generation of video game movies was sonic the hedgehog after two successful live action movies featuring star powers like jim carrey the bluebird is now back for a third big screen outing later this year in sonic the hedgehog 3. if you're wondering how it's all ahead of the 20 if you're wondering how it's all going ahead of the 20th december uh 2024 release in an update on social media, the director, Jeff Fowler, has announced filming has officially wrapped. To confirm this, he shared a shot of himself featuring some cool drawings of Sonic and the gang, including, spoiler, Shadow. The same character was previously teased in the second movie. And there you go. And so here he is right here uh, on the set of Sonic 3 teasing that, hey, you know, we're done, baby. We are done. Filming is wrapped. Uh, I like his shirt. Keep calm and Jim Carrey on. That's real. But you got uh, you got tails to the left at the bottom. You also have knuckles to the left. You have Sonic on the far right, and that's Shadow in the middle. That is Shadow in the middle. And like I said, I enjoy both films. Um, and look at this: sixty-four um, percent on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. So that's that's pretty good. That's the first one. Uh, what are the? Well, yeah, that's that's Sonic. The, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog. What are, what are the second one? So sixty four and ninety three. Uh, let's see here. What did the? What did the second one do? Sonic, Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog two. Okay, so it did even more. Sixty nine and ninety six, and it really felt like the game. Real talk. They did a good job with this. One of the best, or if not the best, video game adaptations ever. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, how much did it make? All right, let's check this out. Uh, 319, okay, so that's over three times the budget. So, cool, cool, I can rock with it. And what did part two do? Uh, for even more money. Don't know what the budget is, but, you know, I'm assuming they made some money. You know what I'm saying? So this is good news. This is really uh, this is really good news. You know, so uh, I'm happy about this. Are you guys uh, happy about this? Let's see here. Uh, you said two was better to be honest with you. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. I don't remember which one I like better. I, I do remember that I like both of them. Um, let's see here. Danny C said, I watched both. Uh, cool, I love playing the game back in the day. I think the common thing worked because it's not cutting off. Unfortunately, I would pay for a ticket. Why, well, unfortunately? Uh, unfortunately, I would pay for a ticket for a different movie and then sneak into Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Wait, 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 wait. Let me make sure I understand what you're saying. I, unfortunately, I would pay for a ticket for a different movie and then sneak into Sonic 3. Same for Pickles. I don't want to see anything with James Marsden, but what he did to Drake Bell. Oh, I see what you're saying. You don't want to give your money to him. Uh, well, do whatever you want to do. You know, I'm not, you're an adult. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what James Marsden did. I heard some rumblings, but I didn't look into it, so I can't comment there. Uh, but hey, you know, you know, it is what it is. Um, I remember the first Sonic movie trailers was getting trashed. Then Paramount wisely pay. Uh, th this is true. Th yes, th this is. Yeah, man. That. Oh, let me let me look that up, man, because that was awful. Sonic the Hedgehog, man. Those uh, early images were garbage because I was trying to prepare some some images for you guys before yeah look at this that is trash y'all see that over there oh lord but yeah this is uh hold on let me let me try to make this better for y'all this was dookie just straight up just ugly mouth yeah look at that they were tripping big time balls with that right there so I'm glad they listened because, like I said, that was awful. So you're not lying. You're not lying. Uh, let's see here. Both was good in my opinion. 
I heard you, uh, Miss Eli Elias. Yeah. So, I'm I'm happy that you know filming is done. Um, hopefully, the third can be as great as the first two. And if so, man, we got a nice trilogy on our hands. You know what I'm saying? So, if y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. And uh, if you're watching via live or in the replay, um, let me know what your thoughts. You know, and again. Uh, link is in the description. All right. All right. All right. All right. What we what we got next? What are we doing next? Okay. Ah, yes. I talked about this two weeks ago um, for Moving News Roundup number 120. And I am happy about this. Some people may be like, man, another sequel? What are they doing? Why can't they come up with anything fresh and new? Why do they keep making these? You know, like I'm getting tired of them. I doubt it. You know, it has an audience. People keep showing up. You know what I'm saying? So I don't blame the studio for continuing this on and they making movie, making movie. They making money. This is topic number five. This is coming from Joe Blow. Joe Blow dot com and what does Joe Blow has to say for topic number five um, Scream 7 Courtney Cox and Patrick Dempsey joining Nev Campbell in the cast all right is that, is that good you know they're coming back you know possibly thought that they uh, weren't returning anymore but they are coming back all right Stop all the clapping. Update. Variety has confirmed that Courtney Cox is in talks to join Nev Campbell in Scream 7. They didn't mention Pax Patrick Dimsey in the report, even though that's in the title. The original article published March 25th follows Spyglass Media and Paramount once intended to make Scream 7. They would have starred Scream 7, Scream 2022, and Scream 7 leads Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega. Uh, but, you know, they bounce, you know, because um, Ortega asked for a pay raise, which she deserves. And we saw when Nev Campbell dropped out due to a pay dispute as well. Uh, these pay issues don't don't tend to work out. But they did for Nev Campbell because, you know, she she is coming back. Then Barrara was fired after she made some, you know, comments about, it, you know, this right here. I don't want to say it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but we've heard that executives were hoping to get Scream 3 co-star Patrick Dempsey to join her in this one, reprising the role of LAP detective Mark Kincaid. And industry scooper Daniel Rickman hears that Dempsey is in talks to do just that. Rickman sources also claim that Courtney Cox is locked in to return as author and report Gail Weathers, which would make sense because Cox has never missed out on any of these movies right here. So uh, that's pretty much it right there. Um, and there you go. Patrick Dempsey. He, he, if he coming back, he probably going to be the murderer. You know, uh, <laughs> Now Nathan Moore said, "Hey man, I I'm done. Can can we can can we get something else, please? I'm over it. I'm done. I won't no more. Okay. Have you seen the other films, Nathan? They, I mean, six and seven were pretty good. Four was the worst to me, in my opinion. Uh, but I imagine. I mean, it is seven. I heard a screen. Oh, I'm clicking the wrong thing. Um, uh, heard this is the last one." But I mean, you know, I'm not okay. Patrick Dempsey coming back. Okay, cool. I'm not just clamoring for it, but why not? You know, I'm not mad at him for coming back. But the more come back, the more people coming back, the better. I, I to fire her over this is just I don't know if I agree with that, but you know, whatever. But Courtney Cox and Patrick Dempsey are joining the cast, or question mark at least. Uh, what did you think about the franchise, and are, are you happy with this? and all that let me know in the comment section below your thoughts whether you're watching this via live uh, or the re um, or the replay and yeah Tasman um, you are correct wait a minute is oh you seen all of them Nathan okay I got you and let's see here as long as they make money yeah they are making money they are making money uh, that screen move with Janet Ortega is great. Yep. Sub so Dane C. Patrick Dempsey just did that Thanksgiving. Yep. 
<clears throat> he needs <laughs> right on right on right on all right all right so link in the description guys y'all let me know what y'all think down below uh in the comment section all right all right all right let's keep the party going topic number six now i was late to the party uh as far as <clears throat> checking out the trailer for this film we can possibly check it out again uh oh i have some screen box office stuff to pull up but i didn't so, oh well we can keep going Duh, not, not that big a deal but um uh, the trailer for this was pretty dope um it was so I'm I, I am looking forward to this. Uh I am. Um oh that's the wrong let me see here. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I, I am looking forward to this. This is uh topic number six coming from Movie Web. Nothing beats the real oh what's the hell going on? Nothing beats the real thing. Alien Romulus director reveals he built every creature and set for the film right 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 that's dope so let me do this because i'm just in the mood to watch a trailer um because i was having some issues last time i tried to and i know i downloaded it so it should be i didn't i didn't i wasn't going to react to it again i mean i've already seen it but uh wait a minute where Really? Oh, here we are. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So here. Oh, wait a minute. Me plus. Wait, 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 wait. Ah. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Uh. Okay. All right, this is the, wait a minute, what the hell? Okay, yeah, here we go. Um, wait a minute. Can y'all hear that? Get it away from me. Oh, what the fuck? Run. There we go. I was sorry. No, I, I didn't know how to start and stop the trailer, uh, but I'm, I'm more ready now. Okay, y'all can't hear. Okay, great, great, great. All right, let me do this again. You know, this may not even be like... Hold on. Uh, this may not even be that big a deal, y'all, but... Stop it, mother effer. Where is it at? Like, the way that her hair was blowing in the wind... Right here. I don't know why that's just so badass to me. Like, it just... I mean, it just makes the film that much better that she's really struggling and up a creek right now trying to survive just her hair blowing in the wind like i don't know why that just does it for me man i am i'm i'm looking forward to this man so yeah what is what does he say let's get into this 
Uh, Alien Romulus director Freddie Alvarez has a no green screen obsession and rely heavily on practical effects. That is what I'm talking about, man. Yeah. Let's do it. Director uh, Freddie Alvarez is taking a stand against the CGI trend with his upcoming film, Alien Romulus. In a new recent interview with THR, Alvarez shared his commitment to using practical effects for the film's creatures and sets, mirroring the techniques used in the iconic 1986 film, Aliens. Director's passion for practical effects extends beyond just the creatures. I have this obsession with no green screens, so we built every creature and set, Alvarez said. Everything had to be built, so we really living and breathing in these spaces. While he acknowledges the value of CGI in certain situations, Alvarez emphasizes that for a for face-to-face -face encounters and moments with creatures, nothing beats the real thing. Yeah. This guy knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. I'm happy to hear it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Y'all y'all let me know. Uh <laughs> Alvarez's dedication to authenticity <clears throat> is evident in his decision to reunite the original team responsible for creating the xenomorphs in Aliens, he explains. Okay. For the creatures, we brought in all the guys from Aliens. They were in their early 20s when they made Aliens, and they were a part of Stan Winston's special effects team. And now we had them at the top of their game. They have their own shops. And so we brought them all together to work on the creatures because we went in because we went with all animatronics and puppets at every level. I even got the chance to be under the table with them puppeteering all of these animatronics. Yes, I love it, y'all. I love it. I love it, man. This is this is uh, this is uh, this is great. This is great. So we saw the trailer and, and, you know, use practical effects, but then use the um, CGI to enhance the practical, like in post or something. You know what I'm saying? If it's looking a little too puppeteer ish or animatronics ish, you know, throw, throw a little CGI on there. Now, you know, the whole thing don't got to be CGI, but this is great, man. Look, look at that. Ooh, feel like it's going to kill you just by looking at you. You know what I'm saying? So, I already bucked off. So I feel you, man. Practical effects. Practical effects. Yes. Uh, man, it's about time. Go to the original source, right? Hey, man. Dane, come on. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> uh, I'm just messing with you. But you, you got a point. I ain't mad at you. So, yeah, man, I'm 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 down with this all the way, ten toes down, one hundred percent. You know, we're gonna have some uh, some some practical effects, baby. Practical effects. So you guys, let me know what y'all think about that. And the and I haven't even seen all the aliens films. I may have to have some type of uh, I may have to have some type of uh, what you call it, um, uh, uh, watch a thon, watch a thon, or something. You know. So yeah. I, I, you, yeah, I, I hear you. Let's go. Let's go. Practical. Let's do it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, watch party. Yeah, may have to have a... May have to have a watch party. Oh, wait. Oh, the, oh don't. Did the... What happened? B. Okay, I was wondering, like, why this comment? I can't put it up, but there you go. Okay, there you go. All right, guys. All right, let's let's keep the party going. Keep the party going in the city. All right. So this is going to be all right. Now I it's, I think it was you, Nathan, that was saying earlier that you are over this. Um, I am definitely over this. I don't give a crap about this anymore. Um. I mean, the only reason I will be interested in this is because of who they would be bringing in to uh, take over to fulfill the role. Because I'm just over this franchise right now. Now, this is coming from uh, the people or people.com. This is a uh, topic. Topic number seven, man. Got some Jurassic World news. Why is it a big deal? Well, let's uh, 
Let's talk about it. Scarlett Johansson and talks to lead the next Jurassic World movie set for 2025. You know, just I, I don't know, y'all. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. Like, uh, I mean, wait, where's, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this it? Uh, nope, nope, that's wrong. Oh! Nope. Damn, I done messed it up. Where, what, what button is it? Is this one? Why? Damn it. Oh my God. Nope. Anyway, I messed up the joke. I was trying to. Oh my yeah. God, who the hell cares? Yeah, that's what I was uh, trying to do, but my bad. I mean, I like Scarlet. I like Scarlet, um, but I'm, I'm just done. I'm just the the last movie was not good. Uh, Scarlett Johansson. Okay, ah, get the hell out of the way. Is reportedly gearing up for a dinosaur adventure. The the Avengers actress 39 is in talks to be the star of the new the next Jurassic World movie, according to reports from Deadline and the Hollywood Reporter. A spokesman for Universal Pictures declined to comment. A rep for Johansson did not immediately respond to people's requests uh, for comment. Gareth Edwards is directing the movie, which is slated for a 2025 July 2nd release date. He previously made 2014's Godzilla and Rogue One. Now, again, I will say this. Only, re only way I would be interested in this is what they just said. The director, Gareth Edwards... And also Scarlett Johansson. I like Scarlett and Gareth Edwards. He did Rogue One, which is the best. I don't to me, hands down, is the best Star Wars uh, film television show out of all the new stuff since Disney bought it. Um, you know, Mandalorian season one and season two is up there. Rogue One is up there. Mandalorian season three, no. Uh, I don't feel like going down the list, but I think y'all get the gist of it. So at least they got some people together that know what the hell they're doing, you know. Um, never miss a okay. Is that the end of the story? Yeah, I mean that, that's pretty much it. They they ain't bringing nobody back. D do y'all care? You know she won some Oscars. Um, yeah. They, I mean y'all do y'all care that she's coming back or not coming back, but going to be a part of it. Let me know. I'm curious. Uh, I'm kind of tired of Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World. How many times can you make a movie about dinosaurs running loose? I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. Uh, now nah, it's over for the franchise, LOL. Yeah, and about that, let's see here. So we all know that the first Jurassic World was fire. The, the, what? It, I, look, this sucked. It was not good. The critics didn't like it. The fans did. It was about bugs. It wasn't about dinosaurs. How much money did it make? It made a lot of money. That's why they're doing it. You know, they it makes it made over a billion. Yeah. So I so I can't get mad at them for that, but I just don't care, man. I just don't care. Ra, ra, ra. That's my dinosaur mouth. Ba 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 ba. Okay, I'm, I'm done being silly. Um, I think the the first Jurassic World made like 1.4 or 1.5 billion, maybe more. Oh yeah, 1.6. But they they continued to go down. So that was 2015. Then Fallen Kingdom, 1.3, and then the last because they're just not not the greatest. Jurassic this one, the 2015 was was straight, but. I don't care. <sighs> you know, maybe, the, and I was going to say, well, if the trailers look good, the trailers always look good. You know, they always look good. So what do y'all think about this? Uh, down below in the comment section, let me know. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm kind of over it, you know. I'm kind of over it. Oh, I got the full screen there, but let me, let me bring back up the, uh, Y'all like this transition right here? Hmm. <laughs> um, how many people watching? We got sixty-four people watching. We, can, we got fifty-two thumbs up. That ain't bad. If we can get a few, if we get, if the matches can, if the views can match the the amount of people, that would be dope. All right, all right. What we got next? Oh Lord. 
Oh, I, I definitely don't care about this one. However, I am going to see if you guys care about it. Cause you could, you could. I don't want to. I don't want to make any assumptions. You know, because when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me, or however the the silly saying goes. But they didn't. This is like the the eighth movie in this franchise, but they're rebooting it supposedly. They are rebooting it supposedly, and I tried to watch. I think when part four or part five came out, I think this had to be no, because I was I was I was graduated from college. And I was staying, I moved back at home and I was paying off all my debt in my parents' house. So this had to be 2010, 11-ish. I tried to binge watch all these movies in anticipation for the new one or the latest one coming up uh, in the franchise. But um, I just can't get a, on board with these. I, it, it just doesn't do much for me. What am I talking about? This is coming from comicbook.com. Says Pirates of the Caribbean producer confirms next movie will be a reboot. Oh my God! Who the hell cares? Yeah, I don't personally. It's been nearly seven years since the last Pirates of the Caribbean movie was released in theaters, and Disney is looking for a way to navigate new waters for the smash hit franchise. There have reportedly been a lot of ideas about the future of the franchise, including Margot Robbie in the lead role. That involves getting Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow's back into the mix. Wait a minute. Oh my god. Oh. Damn it, where is it? Oh my Why? Where is it at? Hold on. Is this it? No. I'm sorry, y'all. Hold on. Nope. There we go. I've been looking for that all show. My fault. I, I get it memorized. Hey, okay, if it's a reboot, how you gonna bring back? Um, are you that, wait getting Johnny Depp back? No. Le no. How you gonna bring the same character back if it's a reboot? I don't care. Um, it's hard to tell. You don't know. You really don't know. Bruckheimer again. You don't know how they come together. You just don't know because with Top Gun, you have an actor who is iconic and brilliant. And how many movies he does before Top Gun, I can't tell you, but we're going to reboot Pirates. So it's easy to put together because you don't have to wait for certain actors. Of course, with Top Gun, Brookhammer is referring to Tom Cruise. Ah. Comicbook.com recently spoke to legendary producer Brookhammer about his new Ministry of Untimely warfare now that does look good and we asked it about the future of the franchise i, I don't want to see this i i just i'm not the the last ones couldn't get me attacked i'm gonna try it because it's my job to review movies and and do the best that i can of uh, reviewing and recapping these things for you but i'm i just don't have any interest i don't i just don't not even enough interest to read the support. I haven't watched most of the Pirate of the Caribbean movies. I thought the last one wasn't that bad with Kaya and Brenton. But I don't think Debt won't ever return. You know. Exactly. It's not a reboot if he comes back. Agreed. Agreed. What's up, Quindolin? Why are they rebooting it? They need to just leave it be. Right. I'm glad you like that. I agree, Soto Soto. So I, I don't I don't give a crap about this, y'all. I, I don't. I don't. So y'all can let me know if you do in the comment section below whether you're watching this via live on a replay. Uh, but I, I, I don't personally care. Um, what was this? It, was this the last one? It, did it make you yeah, seven? Okay, so they made money, but yeah, this is um thirty percent. Look at this. They're not, they so they liked the first one. Man, that came out my sophomore year in college. Man, but God, Lee. Yeah, Lee is alone, man. Ain't nobody rocking with this. 
Well, I'm not. But y'all let me know in the comment section if you looking forward to it. So if you're looking forward to it. So I'm, I'm, I'm not. All right. All right. What we got next? What do we have next? Dun, 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 dun. Now, if they knock out this next film, they can be they can have a somewhat of a 50 50 record because the one that came out in 2009 effing flawless in my opinion it was a cinematic masterpiece i remember i saw this in Louisville, texas with my homeboy aunt b i remember when the movie ended it was a standing ovation and this was not at some press screening like i didn't even i had just started doing movie reviews and yeah 2009 but it wasn't youtube it wasn't my website it was just on facebook when you only had like 150 200 characters but we saw this film in um louisville texas and man it was uh it was fire it was fire i i, I gave this film a perfect 10 out of 10 the movie was that good to me you know um what, what am I talking about? This film right here. Star Trek. And this was amazing. Good ass movie. This is topic number, you know, and part two was okay. Uh, part three was, I, I don't, it was very, very forgettable. I don't remember anything about it at all. But looks like they're trying to keep the party going. This is topic number nine coming from Variety. Star Trek four beams up new screenwriter. The flight attendant created Steve Yaki. Um, they have the exclusive. Steve Yaki, creator of the Ma the Max uh, series, The Flight Attendant, is joining the Starfleet as the new screenwriter for Star Trek IV. Story details remain under a powerful cloaking device, but Paramount Pictures and Bad Robot still intend to uh, in still intend the project to be the final chapter for uh, the cast that rebooted the franchise in movie theaters in 2009 Star Trek including Chris Pine like I said that was fire man um yeah they just named the characters bring the cast back following 2016 Star Trek Beyond has pr been proven trickier for the studio finding an altruistic Ferengi at least three previous attempts fell apart for various reasons most recently with director Max Shackman um Shackman WandaVision and screenwriters Lindsay Beer and Geneva Robertson Durrett that the studio has slated to open in late in 2023. When Shackman left the film in 2022, directed the Fantastic Four, Marvel Studios, however, Paramount pulled it from its slate and sent it back to Space Dock. Yaki's involvement is most promising sign for the momentum the project has had since. The playwright started his TV writing career on the MTV series Awkward and Scream before joining the writing staff of Supernatural for four seasons. His latest series, the Sandman Universe adaptation, Dead uh, Boys Detectives, will premiere on Netflix in April. And that's pretty much the uh, report right there. So, uh, like I said, the first one, man, was super duper fire. Second one was okay. Third one, I, I don't remember at all. It was very, very forgettable. I don't want to just say it was trash. It sucked, but I don't remember it at all. So... <clears throat> You know, if they can uh, knock this out, you know, it'll, you know, be better than, um, you know, they have more positive than negatives, you know, Star Trek. But, you know, what did y'all think about this? Y'all happy? Y'all want to see this? You know, let me know in the uh, comment section. What are you guys saying about this right here? All right. Yep. Quindlin is correct. First two were the best. Second one was good. Star Trek, Star Trek Into Darkness, Star Trek Beyond. Yeah, J.J. Abrams is pretty good. I don't know, Dan C. Let's have some hope. Let's have some hope. So, we're going to see. We're going to see. All right, all right. So, y'all, again, let me know what y'all think. In that comment section, uh, how much does this make? Three eighty-five. Oh, they needed to make four hundred. So one fifty times three. 
or oh, 450 excuse me so it probably broke even made maybe a little bit of money uh, but what did what did the uh, what did the other one make let me go back why are you taking forever to load up why that's doing that so 94% 84% and 86% so up down up uh, into darkness 467 so that's okay it's kind of struggling there 190 times 3 570 yeah, so could have did better and um, yeah they they really pushing it man it's, it's not like these films were profitable so what the hell is the reason it was so long ago yeah they need to hang this up they need to hang this up this is this is not worth not worth it so yeah Uh, the first one was good, but that was way back before I watched Star Wars 2, so I kind of rep Trick more than. Gotcha. Ain't mad at you. Ain't mad at you. So, uh, Knife Topper, you guys let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. Let me know. 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 Oh, uh oh, uh oh. So. And um, actually, we got two topics left. We got one more trailer reaction after this. But let me do this right here. Okay. Um, I like this guy that we were about to talk about. Uh, he did a great job in the last film, Wonka, which is great. It should have been nominated for some type of Oscar, at least better than Barbie. While I did enjoy Barbie, uh, but he did a great job of Wonka. He also did a great job in Doom Part 1 and Part 2. And such a great job with the studio that they're like, hey man, we want to bring you back and and have uh, you know some more deals with you because you're just amazing. You know, we, we want to keep you around. You know, I got the Doom background back there now. But who am I talking about? This is coming from Variety for topic number 10. And what do they what do they have to say? Timothy Chalamet signs Warner Brothers deal to star and produce new movies after Wonka and Dune's success. That's cool. I like this guy. That's a clean as Jackety got it on as well. Uh, Warner Brothers is doubling down on the business of Timothy Chalamet. The studio signed a multi-year feature film deal with the actor to collaborate on future projects as a star and producer. Charlemagne led back-to-back -back box office hits for Warner Brothers with last December's Wonka and this March doing it too. According to the studio, he became the first actor in four decades to star in the top two domestic films that were released in eight months. Charlemagne will enjoy a salary bump after those box office riches. The actor earned more than eight million for Wonka according to sources. Now he's looking at paydays and the double digits for leading roles in studio films. Not mad at that right there. Um, Mike DeLuca and Pam Abbey, co-chairs of CEO Warner Brothers, said they are thrilled that Charlemagne has chosen our studio to be his creative home. As part of the first look agreement, okay, this is a first look deal, Charlemagne can make movies. Um, I lost my spot. Charlamagne can make movies elsewhere, but Warner Brothers will get first dibs on backing his potential projects. That's that he's winning right now. Uh, over the last few years, we have admired not only Timothy's commitment to his craft, which is evident in the range and depth of his very roles, but also his unwavering dedication to giving 100% of his time and attention to every project he has made here at Warner Brothers and elsewhere. They said in a joint statement, his collaboration on the campaigns for Dune uh, and Wonka is something we've all enjoyed immensely and the results speak for themselves yeah Charlemagne is best known for these films right here um, working with Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi 
and the teams on Wonka and Dune over these last few years has been deeply rewarding experience, experience Chalamet said. Uh, these are studio heads who believed in real movie making, and I'm so grateful for their support as an actor, producer, and collaborator. This partnership feels like a natural step. Let's go. So, yeah, man, uh, it, it makes sense. Like I said, I, I like the guy. Uh, got him up here on Rotten, not Rotten Tomatoes, but uh, IMDb. Uh, so, yeah, he was in Dune, Wonka, what else? Intergalactic, I haven't seen it yet. Bones and All, Don't Look Up. That was a good movie on Netflix. Yeah. So, shout out to him. I ain't mad at him. He got 8 million for Wonka. Now he in the double digits of millions. You know what I'm saying? More power to him. And Dune, the first one, made 406. Uh, Dune, the second one, is at 626 right now. And I think the budget for Dune Part 2 was like, what, $80 million? Hold on, let me, let me see. Um... Budget. Oh, okay. Wait. Yeah. Okay. 190. So I was off a bit, but it's still profitable by a lot. So, yeah. 190 times three, so 570. So yeah. You know, will it reach 700? I don't know. I don't know. What did Wonka make? Let's see here. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's he's doing well. So shout out to him, man. So we got some Timothy Chalamet fans. Quindolin, what are you doing? What are you doing, ma'am? Waiting on your comment to pop up so I can bring it on screen. You need a whooping. I still need to see Dune too. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Second one, the first one was pretty good. Second one is fire. Yeah. What's up with Rue 2? What's going on? What's going on? Yeah. I would like a sequel because it was good. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Shout out to him. He's doing great. And um, I support this because, you know, it was just a, a badass movie. So, link is in the description box below for you to read at your own leisure. And uh, whether you're watching this via live on the replay, please let me know your thoughts down below in that comment section. All right. So those are all the topics. Now, we have one trailer reaction that I want to check out with you guys. And if I had to be honest with you, I have heard nothing uh, nothing but horrible things about this. Um, but we, we, we still going, we still going to check it out. So let me, let me get ready. Let me, give me a second. Uh, let's see here. Let me see here. One more time. Okay. Nope, don't want to do that. Okay. Y'all give me a second. Give me a second. All right, got that ready. Let me get this ready. Now, again, I've, I've, I haven't seen it. I've heard nothing but uh, but bad things about this. But I, I, I don't want to, and I'm pretty sure it's bad. Some of y'all already probably know what it is. <laughs> um, but hey, I'm going to still watch it myself and give y'all my thoughts. And um, if y'all didn't know, E-Man did talk about it on his show on Friday. And uh, I, I, of course, I saw everything that he had to say. And uh, I heard Tariq Nasheed talk about this. I heard Double Toast to talk about this. I heard the amazing Lucas talk about this. Uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins. Yeah, so everybody is giving their commentary on this right here. And um, I decided to talk about this at the last minute. So that's why I'm not all the way prepared right now. But it's all good. You guys can 
be patient with me real quick while I get all this together. Okay. All right, all right. So, all right. Yep, y'all got it right. This is going to be the trailer for what some people are calling a minstrel show. Good times. Yeah, good times. Yep. You uh, you got it right, Miss Rachel. You you got it right. We're going to check out this trailer for good times and see what all the fuss is about. So let's go ahead and get this uh, queued up real quick. All right. Here we go. Hold on. Now I got the. All right. Here we go. Here's good times. I have important news. Let me guess. The state. Hold on. Y'all hit a one in the chat um, if y'all can hear this. Okay. One in the chat if you can hear it. Okay, what the f I don't want Darth Vader. Hold on, put up the wrong. Wait a minute, where is it at? Okay, sorry. All right, uh, one in one in the chat if y'all can hear this. One of the, uh, Let me guess. The state called and they want to cut you a disability check for your face. There's a way it's even started <laughs> off, but they have the drug dealing baby. Can you do have proof? Can you only do OnlyFans? I mean, what I, one thing I do agree with is it was like, it's a system. And they put the guns in the neighborhood. You know, that's, they've, they've done that. Um, but the baby is sucking on titties and dealing drugs and. BBL strip club got the little girl in there. Uh, I saw Steve Carey is a part of this too. Yeah, this is uh, I'm I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna be checking this out. I was there was something else that stood out to me, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm good on this. Um, I mean, I'm not just like super duper offended, but I don't care. I'm I'm just you know I'm not gonna. Yeah, they can they can miss me with this right here. Um, JB Smooth, why? Why would you sign up for this? Come on, bruh. Marseille Martin, wait, ain't she the girl from? Um, come on, my young sister. Yeah, from Blackish. I'm disappointed in that. Yeah, and this is based off the old Good Time show. Like, it's not even remotely close. Steve McFarlane, nah, nah, yeah, we don't. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I am good. You know what, guys? I don't want to end the show on that crappy note. I, I don't. Uh, we got to find something else to end the show with because that's just ridiculous right there. Um,. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm over there. We can watch something a little bit more entertaining. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm straight on that. So instead, let's, well, let's watch it. I already got a reaction on my trailer. A reaction on my trailer. I already have a reaction on my channel, but I enjoyed the trailer so much and haven't heard you guys' thoughts so let's uh let's let's do this instead okay this is the bad boys uh for life trailer all right here we go bad boys trailer is coming out right now right now right right now yeah right, right now right now right check, now check it out it's hot come on mike slow down we are late my stomach, Mike. I need a ginger ale. Uh, uh, get a ginger ale and nothing else. Are those dogs fresh? Put them in yesterday. Give me one. Put some relish on that motherfucker. Open the register. Stay right there. Mm -mm. Is that Skittles on the counter, Marcus? This ain't mine, Mike. Yes, it is. Get the fuck up. Marcus, get in the car. He has a gun to my head. Want to deal with him? You want to deal with me? Sorry, sir, but I got to go. 
Call 911. Aren't you the police? Hey, Reggie, did you eat my snacks? No, sir. You ate my snacks, didn't you? You need to get a job. I'm a U.S. Marine, sir. Well, then you need to deploy. Dad, look. We now have evidence that the late Captain Conrad Howard of Miami PD was working directly with drug cartels for years. Captain Howard is being framed. Let's go. What the hell? He's texting us from the other side. No, he's not, Marcus. I'm so glad he came back. Because he died in the third one. But they was able to bring him back. So that's dope as hell. I don't know how high up this shit goes, but don't trust anybody. You're my bad boys. What if he's still alive? What if he faked his death somehow? That would be dope. be careful. They're being set up, detectives. We got two suspects, Lowry and Burnett. They're armed and dangerous. In five, four, three. No! We can't wait for Lowry! It's flammable! I ain't no damn scientist! Y'all are some terrible fucking fugitives. Ah! I can feel like any rest in my memories. Me and Drizzy back to back is getting scared. Naked. I need that to be my bad boy. I got this. What you doing? This looks fun. Like, I can't wait for this. I was in June. And I love that shot right there. Are y'all still in our clothes? Just because we black, we still in your shit? We're over root, so you gotta see Bad Boys 3. Why don't you sing us a little Reba song? Oh, uh, Reba. Sing your favorite. Uh, I'm a woman. I'm a strong, I'm a strong black woman. Strong. Yeah, I'm cause a, she's not black. Yes. What you gonna do? What you gonna mm -mm. That ain't no Reba song. It's from mm. her mixtape. When they come for you. Yeah, I can dig it, man. I'm really looking forward to that right there. So, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't end on that crap that we got from Good Times, so. I had to end it on something else, y'all. All right, so. Well, guys, that is, uh, that is gonna do it. That is gonna wrap it up for <coughs> the Movie News Roundup show. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Um, and also, you know, I was having some technical difficulties last time. Uh, with the show, with the comments and all that. But y'all be honest, what do y'all think about the new production? There's still some design updates that I'm going to be adding in, like this particular screen right here. I think I'm going to put the Movie News logo at the bottom somewhere and make my name and title bigger. Uh, you see how my name is here on the left, but on the right in the corner, I'm going to put another logo. And I haven't even invited guests and it's going to be even more designs with that as well and you see there's like a white border um i may what am i trying to say i may uh make those bigger i have certain colors as well but i uh yeah so i really like this too and so um hold on one second i gotta get this i gotta make sure i save this Ah, da -dee da da -dee da Give me two seconds. Oh, shoot. I know that was going to happen. Hold on. Ah, damn it. Fade. Damn it. I know what I did, too, to make that happen. Hold on. I want to read some of y'all comments as well. Uh, I was trying to do that. Oh, y'all can't even see me. I'm tripping. Hold on, how do I? How am I going to fix this? Host. Quick play. Ah, oh, I don't miss my. Hold on. Oh man, hold on, how am I going? Okay.
try to uh reload. Oh, okay, I can't. Well, Thank you, Taz, man. Uh, well, I done messed up the feed, so. Hold on. Oh. Okay, well, we can go ahead and end it there. So, uh, guys, again, uh, actually, hold on. I don't know if I'll have any guests next week. Uh, I may try to still work out some kinks and stuff, but, guys, I am getting close to 50,000. And so if you can, please check out my, um, hold on, what's going on? There we go. Check out my uh, Godzilla review. I would really appreciate it. And Shogun is uh, coming up as well. Oh, and before I head out of here, I need to, I'm so glad I remembered to do this because I would have been pissed if I forgot. Hold on. I don't know if I can do this while I'm live. Uh, customization. Yeah, I don't want it to go there. I want it to. Oh, hold on. Okay. Bam. Video. Hold on, y'all. Let me sign off, but give me two seconds. Come on, YouTube, load up. There we go. Okay. Uh, public schedule. We're gonna do this Tuesday at midnight. Done. Save. Okay, now we're gonna reload this. There we go. Okay. Save. If y'all watch Shogun, that's going to be debuting uh, Tuesday at midnight as well. All right, guys. So thank y'all so much for, let me get in the center, for tuning in. I do appreciate it. And uh, I will see you guys uh, next time. All right. Hold on. All right. Peace out.